Hello and welcome to Baiju's JE. Here's another video in our Target JE Advanced series. We're going to look at a chemistry, uh, a couple of chemistry topics here from inorganic chemistry. We're going to look at uh, S-block elements and P-block elements from the 11th standard, which is group 13 and group 14. We haven't included hydrogen in this because it's not tested in the JE Advanced exam. Although there are questions that come from it in the JE main exam. What we're going to do is, as usual, analyze what came in the last few years of the JE Advanced exam and the 2019, the eight shift yeah, of the 2019 JE main paper. We'll look at those questions. We'll follow that up with a rapid revision and then some handpicked questions, some handpicked questions for you. Before we get started, if you like our content, please share it with as many people as possible, of your friends, and subscribe. So, what happened in the JE Advanced exam? Let's see. In the 2018 uh, paper, no question was asked. 2017, one MSQ on uh, boron as well as aluminium. 2016, another MSQ on borax. You'll see a trend over here. 2015, integer on diborane. So, all of this has been on the uh, properties of boron, specifically group 13, right? 2014, MSQ, again on boric acid. So, it looks like the examiners really like this. Uh, there is a scope of asking questions from group 14 as well. Hydrogen is not in the syllabus of the advanced exam. In the JE main paper, a lot of questions have been asked from uh, S block group 13, 14, and hydrogen also, mostly from S block and hydrogen. And you'll see there have been properties of uh, group 14, which is catenation, bonding, and all of that. Question on rubidium uh, oxides, and a lot of other common ideas that you'd expect. Yeah, Hydro uh, hydrogen peroxide also was tested. Uh, hard water, that was also tested. So a lot of questions. And this is one of those chapters you need, just need to read like a like a like a story, yeah? like like maybe history. A lot of reactions coming through. We look at a rapid revision from the point of view of the JE Advanced Exam right now. Let's look at the rapid revision from the point of view of the S block elements. Now this is mainly for the point of view of the JE Main Exam. Uh, the all of them have an electronic configuration of NS one or two and an oxidation state of 1 plus 1 or plus 2. Remember, this is also used as a rule in redox reactions. Important compounds on your screen right now. So Na2O2, known as oxone, is an oxidizing agent, just like most peroxides. Na2O is another compound you need to revise. Solvase process, one that forms Na2CO3. It's probably one of the most important ideas in this chapter. Uh, it's NaCl reacts with CaCO3, gives you Na2CO3 and CaCl2. You can look at all the side reactions on your screen right now that are used. Sodium carbonate is used water softening and many other uses also in formation of poor axon this is this part may be important for you from the point of view of the J advanced exam as well um, next let's look at NaCl the structure is in front of you you already know this if you've done solid state yeah that sodium is much smaller than chlorine it occupies octahedral void so a revision kind of link with that too um, uses yeah, obviously as common salt and has and also used in the preparation of Na2O2 NaOH and Na2CO3 so these compounds are quite linked, so you'll have to read through them mainly so that you can uh, apply it in an advanced idea, maybe in the boron family or something else like that. NaOH, the preparation of caustic soda, this is done by the using the idea of electrochemistry. It's called the Kastner Kellner cell, and uh, basically mercury is used as the cathode, carbon is the anode, sodium combines with mercury and forms the amalgam at cathode, chlorine gas is boiled on the anode. Again, from the point of view of the JE main exam, very useful from the advanced. Maybe a question could be asked in the form of a paragraph from here. It's possible. Um, uses, it's used in the manufacturing of soap, paper, and many other things. Sodium hydrocarbonate or sodium bicarbonate is uh, also known as baking soda. It's really useful if you like cake. You already know about this. Also used in antiseptics and fire extinguishers. Many other compounds of sodium, but the most important one that's remaining is just Na2SO4, which you need to, you need to revise. The compounds of potassium that are important are on your screen right now. K2O2 peroxide, KO2, superoxides, a superoxide that has been tested in the JE Advanced paper, not recently, but many uh, years back. Uh, KOH or caustic potash is also very useful. It's used as a reagent in organic chemistry and also in the NIFE storage cell. Yeah? Uh, potassium carbonate would be the next compound we look at. You see that the anions are very similar between sodium and potassium and the preparation methods are also similar. So please read through them in detail. You have K2O, KCl, K2SO4 and KHCO3 also. Potash alum is something that you need to go into a little bit of detail from, again, the JE main point of view because of the environmental chemistry aspects of it, the purification of water. Uh, let's move on to magnesium right now. Magnesium, MgCl2, important compound. It makes MgO, you know, the magnesium ribbon test burns that's also possible with this uh, mgo is a useful antacid uh, things like digene and stuff 
uh, MgSO4 or Epsom salt is something that has been tested in the past in a match the following kind of setup. You have the name given, you need to match the kind of compound it has. Uh, move on to calcium. Now, calcium oxide is an important uh, compound. It's also known as quicklime. This is very, very useful industrially. And again, more from the JE main point of view than the advanced. The reactions in front of you show you how this is formed. This is a really important uh, ingredient in preparation of cement. Calcium hydroxide, slake lime, lime water or milk of lime is the next compound you should be looking at. A little, a little bit of detail, a little bit of uh, excess. If I pass carbon dioxide through calcium hydroxide, you form calcium carbonate and excess carbon dioxide forms CaHCO3 cold wise. Uh, the most important from uh, idea from here, from the calcium compounds is for formation of bleach actually. Yeah. It, it's one of the tests. We'll look at that in detail when we do P block 2. Plaster of Paris or calcium sulfate is the next idea that you need to be familiar with. Uh, the reaction is in front of you right now. Formation of gypsum is also another important thing. So a lot of compounds here, a lot of theory that you need to go through. So do this more uh, as a reading exercise and you know, use placards to kind of remember what happens here. Uh, I know it's a little bit difficult, but it's tested extensively in the JE main exam, if not so much in the JE advanced exam. You have uh, calcium hypochlorite and also its use is in swimming pools, sanitization also in, uh, you know, in large water treatment plants. All right, that's all that we have for a rapid revision from the S block elements. Let's check out groups 13 and 14 in a little more detail now. Now the group 13 elements all have the same electronic configuration, NS2, NP1. Uh, now mostly they show a plus one and a plus three state. But the plus one state kind of uh, is more stable as you go down the group because of the inert pair effect. The plus three state is not that high. Uh, you'll see this uh, tested very often in the main exam and also at times the J advanced exam. The inert pair effect is basically the S orbital not participating in the bonding because of the poor shielding of the intervening electrons. Uh, the compounds of group three elements, so this is really important. Yeah, This has been tested time and again in the J advanced exam also, Yeah, especially borane. Diborane has been tested many times in the main exam as well. So let's look at that. Diborane has, uh, you know, it's basically prepared by this reaction over here. The structure, the structure has been tested many times. It's, it's got a banana bond, yeah. The three center, two electron thing, that's what this is. So you have B2 at six and this is what the compound looks like. And so you can't guess this. You have to know the structure. And this is something you must spend time on. It takes like maybe five minutes for you to read through it, maybe 10 minutes to understand it better. You should do that. Uh, borax is the next thing and the most important thing from this entire P block elements and actually S and P block in its entirety. So the interesting thing is that it forms this tetra nuclear unit of uh, boron. You see that on your screen. And uh, the hybridization is different in some of these. Uh, you know, it, not all the borons have the same hybrid, hybridization. They're highlighted on the screen right now. Uh, the number of BOB bonds and stuff like that has been tested in the past in the advanced exam. Sure, the main exam also has questions, but they're slightly simpler. Not so much on the structure, but on the reactions of borax. Boric acid is the next thing you need to revise. Most of the stuff I'm going to repeat from now on, uh, that I'm going to say from now on, are uh, pertinent from the point of view of the J main exam. Not so much in the advanced. Just the ones before this have been tested a lot in the advanced exam. So you have boric acid, B2O3 reacts with water to form boric acid. Now here, this is a bit of a trick. Uh, boric acid is a monobasic acid. Yeah, with water, it forms this complex NH+. It's not a tri-basic uh, acid. Yeah, so be careful about that. Alumina is something you need to know. It has two different forms. Uh, yeah, corundum as well as activated alumina, alpha and gamma forms. Uh, this will be tested in the main exam. How do you prepare it and what happens? That's also on your screen right now. This AL, ALOH whole thrice becomes ALO3 as well as gives you water. Aluminum chloride, revise that a bit. Let's move on to 14th group right now. Yeah, 14th group, the general electric configuration is going to be NS2 and B2. Now, similar to the 13th group, what, what's going to happen here is that the plus 2 stage, right, it's going to show two oxidations, right? plus 2 and plus 4. Plus 4, which stage, uh, state is not going to be that uh, easy to achieve for elements down the group. Why? Right? Same idea, inert pair effect. So that's an idea that's been tested in the main exam as well as the advanced exam as a one of the options of the multiple answer correct, uh, questions that you could choose correctly. Um, allotropy, the idea of catenation has been tested a lot in the JE main exam. That's what you should be revising next. Allotropes of carbon especially, the whole of organic chemistry based on that, right? Um, you can talk about amorphous as well as crystalline uh, uh, allotropes, diamond and graphite. An important thing to notice, graphite is more stable than uh, carbon. <laughs> graphite is more stable than diamond, thermodynamically speaking. Silicates, 
would end this chapter and also are really really important from the jay main point of view yeah uh, not be tested of late yeah there's a good chance that they could be tested in the jay advanced exam because of the structures involved and the jay advanced exam really likes structures you'll see that in p block 2 when we do that so silicates yeah in general uh, fusing alkali oxides with sio2 gives you silicates and they have many different tetrahedral units so you see on your screen uh, you have ortho silicates you have pyro silicates you have cyclic silicates yeah, you know, kind of funny structures uh, the main thing is that si and o are kind of bonded together alternatively there are chain silicates two types meta silicates as well as amphi bios and amphi bols and there are 2d silicates and 3d silicates you don't have to know all of them but just go through them uh, and see how what formula represents uh, shows you what kind of a structure just get a sense of it and you know, who knows you may get some easy marks if you do so silicones the last part of this chapter that we would going to revise quickly now these are polymers okay of silicon which is pretty interesting it has si o si linkages and the general formula is r2 si o whole times x and the way to make this is on your screen right now that's the reaction that happens um so yeah this pretty much sums up a rapid revision of s block and p block elements remember in the last 5 years it's been primarily boron compounds has been asked but that does not mean that ideas from silicon and other parts of the uh, carbon family or something else may not be tested so yeah uh, stay on your toes if you want to get marks on this an easy chapter should get maximum marks on it just need to spend a little bit of effort on uh, memorizing things okay a question that expects a number is the answer what's given to us let's see you have kinoid your name a chain of 3 sio4 yeah, tetrahedra Uh, the corners are shared and this has uh, co2 plus ca2 plus and water all of them in the ratio 1 is to 1 is to 1 need to figure out the total number of atoms in this crystal structure what's the approach going to be this is a no brainer right obviously the first thing you're going to do is draw the structure right uh, after that we're going to find out the total negative charge why why is this a thing why do we have to do this in the first place look some oxygen atoms are shared some are not the ones that are shared will not have a negative charge as for me the structure to do this once we get this then we can figure out the number of cu2 plus and ca2 plus ions luckily for us they are both 2 plus ions ratio is 1 is to 1 so this also should be very doable the main thing is the structure and the last thing is counting atoms let's get started first draw the structure here it is on your screen now uh, the blue ones are oxygen obviously si is silicon and yellow and the ones are sharing all, all of the bonds corner tetra the corner atoms in the tetrahedra are shared right that's these guys right here yeah i've drawn yellow line i shaded it a little bit that's that's the shared oxygen okay between the two uh, between the tetrahedra and this is the entire structure that's it from here just count the number of uh, negative charges the ones that, the ones that are not charged will all the ones that are not shared will all have one negative charge also so there's one here 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 a total of eight minus charge over here eight electrons okay Eight minus eight electrons. Okay. Now, next step is pretty uh, straightforward. Eight electrons imply that I need a plus eight charge to balance this out, right? So we'll do that now. Uh, the ratio is same. Cu two plus and Ca two plus. Total charge is eight. So they would both have a charge of four plus, right? They would both contribute to four plus because the ions are equal. Number of ions would be this divided by two because I have the charge over here. No brainer. I'm doing this slowly, but yeah, you really don't need. It. That's it. It's both of these would have two and two. Formula. What's the formula going to be? I have Ca two, Co two, Si O four, thrice, and let's not forget two H two. Because remember, the ratio is one is to one is to one. What I'm talking about? Well, all of these compounds, uh, all of these have Ca, C, as well as water. All the ratios of one is to one is to one. What's the total? Oh, SiO four thrice. That's a bad thing, right? That's not right. Let's count the actual formula. Let's see, the diagram is Si three. Oxygens are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's count that again. Six, six, eight. Hmm. Four, four. Oh, that's bad count. Let's just write down separately. I have four here. I have four here. I have two here. That's ten. So this is Si three or ten. Uh, so I made a small error here. It's okay. 
we, we need to look at the structure for everything. This is not a right way of doing it. Although there are three SIO reports that are either shared, the actual structure, as you can see, count and tells you how many uh, oxygen atoms are actually there. So it's a little different from what it was if I just put that SI or, or, or thrice. So yeah, be careful about this part. Total number of uh, atoms is four here, 13 here, and six here. That's uh, 19, 3, 23, 24, 20. That's your answer right here. A uh, simple question once you figure out the formula, uh, figure out how to draw the structure. Formula is what you need to get in the end. And be careful about stuff. I did it in a hurry and I wrote this, which was uh, wrote, wrote an incorrect thing over here. We corrected that by looking at the formula. Straightforward question. Answer is 23. Here's a question that requires a numerical answer as the input. We have two compounds given to us over here. You have Li2CO3 and K2CO3. They are heated, seven moles of each. We are just asked to figure out the volume of CO2 released. It seems like a no-brainer, direct question. What's your approach going to be? Well, write down the balanced equations and just solve, right? Uh, to convert, to find out the volume, we just have to use this idea that, okay, at, at STP, you know this from gaseous state, right? 22.4 liters is equivalent to one mole of a gas. That's the only extra idea, so to speak. But this, this is something that you should be really, really familiar with by now. Let's see what gives. Here are two reactions written for you. Light to CO3 and heat gives you a light to O and CO2. Nice and neat reaction. The second one is similar. K2CO3 gives K2O plus CO2. That's it. So, yeah, the ratio is 1 is to 1. What am I talking about? The ratio of the compound to the, I mean, to the, the mole ratio to CO2 released. Hmm. Here's the thing though. Second reaction doesn't happen. So, you could really muck this up by assuming that it does. Uh, it's just math, right? There's no options here. You could put a number as the answer. So, be careful. The only trick in this question is that second reaction doesn't happen. This is quite stable uh, to heating. Li2, however, is formed. So, all that's happening here is that 7 moles of uh, CO2 are formed, right? Not 14 as you would maybe expect to because this does not happen. From here, you just multiply this with 22 point. 4 liters, and that happens to be how much that uh, 1.8 liters, which is your answer. Um, so, there you go. That's the answer right there. Be careful. The only thing that you needed to be careful about here is K2CO3 does not dissociate on heating. Li2CO3 does. Answer is 6.8 liters. Here's a question that requires a numerical input as the answer. Now, we are given that CrOH whole thrice reacts with Na2O2, sodium peroxide. We asked to find out the moles of NO2O2 that react with exactly one mole of CrOH whole thrice. Now, two ways to do this. One is, you know the equation, you put the answer down right away, which is quite unlikely because you know again, chemistry has a lot of equations. No other equation is good for you, but I think the other way, yeah, us actually figuring out what happens here. Let's do that. Let's try that out. What's the approach going to be? First thing is, well, CrOH whole thrice gets oxidized to CrO4 2 minus. Why is that? Well, this is 3 plus oxygen. Here it becomes 6 plus. Okay. This is the only thing that will work. Basic medium. O2 2 minus gets reduced to O2 minus. How's that? This is minus 1. This is the only way to go to only become minus 2. You need to balance this, these redox reactions. Basic medium. Uh, the, the deal with redox reactions is that you can balance it in whatever way you're comfortable. Just make sure that no extra ions are lying around in the end, okay? When, when it's basic medium and acid. So let's let's get started. Let's look at the oxidation reduction outside on the screen right now. Cr3 plus becomes CrO4 minus. That's the oxidation because here, 3 changes to 6. Okay? Reduction after is here. Minus 1 peroxide becomes minus 2. Okay. Um, let's do this. Let's do this. That's Now there's a negative charge of 5 on this side. Now here I have plus 3. So I add uh, 8 H plus here. Just balance the charge out right now. Okay, I know that kind of messed up the hydrogen. Balance. We'll, we'll figure that out. Don't worry. So now the total charge on both sides is, is balanced. I have 3 plus here and 8. Uh, 8, eight, eight sorry, yeah, that's 3. Two. Okay, let's, let's get rid of this H plus. Not get rid of it right now, but on the left hand side, balance it basically. The atoms. 
time guys to for us start up whole edge with this side and this oxidation half seems balanced to me charge wise and all the atoms right yeah good to go reduction half what's happening here first thing is i i can't stand two one one atom on this put two here yeah first if you mess mess this part up the rest of the balance seems completely right so as soon as you see unequal uh, uh, atoms on left and right hand side just figure that out first okay so here now you, you know that two electrons are added on this side get from minus and minus why because there are two atoms in one okay one electron each per atom all right this one charge is balanced and number of atoms also is balanced now uh, most important part of redox reactions the total number of electrons exchanged in both of them need to be the same you need to multiply this by here with two to get to six electrons all right let me write that down स्टार्टिंग I remove the uh, spectate ion, so to speak, initially. Yeah, that's why I had this ionic equation. You're wondering why did I write it like this? It's easier to balance it in this way. If I had the whole clunky equation where I have put in CrO2 or CrO2 and Na2O2, it would get a little bit more difficult to do. So I think this is an easier way out for me personally. If you have a better way of doing it, sure, you choose that. I think this is easy for me, so I'm doing this, and maybe some students will find this useful too. Okay. Anyway, uh, so I get this two CrO2, right? And uh, two, three, and two. Okay, so this is what I have on the left hand side. Now, since I've added atoms on the left hand side, I also need to add the same amounts on the right hand side. Writing everything as as it was, uh, CrO four two minus is formed. So if I add sodium here, then I get this compound, right? This makes sense. Na two CrO four, yeah. Chromate uh, CrO four two minus has a charge of so I need two sodium plus. Balance that out. Count that. Uh, what else do I say? CH plus. Keep that in mind. Six O two minus. What am I missing? I added six O H minus ions. Right here. Let me add that on this side. Six O H minus. This is a bit of accounting. Seems a little tedious, but I think this is a wonderful way out because you'll see something that happens. I, I, I think it was it's pretty awesome. You, you know what it is. What I'm talking about. So, okay, from here, the number of sodium ions are not quite balanced. Yeah, there are six over here, yeah? and there are four over here. So I'm adding plus two plus here. Happens. Means take away two of these. This basically. Four OH minus plus OH. Okay. So I'm going to replace what is in these we are looking back at by this. Why did I do that? Because if Na plus ions are existing, uh, they, the count ion would be OH minus. Now this is something we didn't really expect. And to be honest, uh, we can kind of get the answer from just LHs of the equation right here. But because the balancing is so wonderful, uh, I thought I'll walk you through that. Uh, I'll tell you how we can get the answer just by just LHs. Just hold on for a minute. Okay, so from now on, I, I can get rid of some of the water molecules. I have eight H two O here. I have sixteen H plus, and I have six O two minus. Now, what if I take two O two minus away from here? If I take two O two minus away from this guy, what I'm left over with is again two H two O plus two N A O H. What I get here is combining these two and also this two O two minus here, I get eight H two O. It cancels out the water molecules here. Um, that's it. So let me remove everything that's been cancelled out, so that things become a little bit more clear and it's a little cluttered up for now. And the balanced equation then would just have this guy here, the line, this guy here, 
this guy here and any which well let's oh, let's let's not use those anymore. We, we are kind of we will remove those so let's this so finally the balanced equation would be this this is the final balanced reaction so although we didn't really know that NaOH was formed initially unless you probably knew the reaction we figured that it has to happen that's what i said was very beautiful about uh, this sort of balancing that we did we weren't sure we didn't know but hey sure this is the only way the balancing works and we figured it out just by accounting for every ion that was there anyway the answer you could have just figured out with that lhs part which is that two crohs uh, molecules react with 3 Na2O2, which gives me the answer that I want to be 1.5. Yeah, so per mole would be 1.5, which is your answer. A uh, pretty interesting thing. Uh, I told you the other way to do it would be to just know what the reaction is. Yeah, that's a cheat code. And if you've studied a lot, once a lot of reactions, maybe you know this. So that's one way to do it. The other way, a quick summary go up, show you for the approach page. We did the whole oxidation reduction halves, we balanced the reduction reaction, basic medium. Uh, the medium matters not so much because we already have the OH minus counter ions on both sides. Yeah, you have CROH, both sides and NAOH. That should be fine. Um, and we did this whole exercise of balancing. We figured that NAOH was also there. It was pretty cool. Just by our balancing efforts, making sure that every step was done meticulously, we got the right equation. Although I, I personally didn't know that NAOH would be there. But hey, there you go. All right, answers 1.9. Here's a question that can have more than one correct answer. So all of these statements are about boron. We're just gonna look at them, analyze them, and figure out which is the correct option. Let's get started. That's the first one talks about boric acid being what is the basis here? That's what it means. So boric acid here, this is the structure. Looks like it would uh, give away three H plus ion. But in water, what happens is this is This structure is formed along with just one hydrogen ion, which means that this is a mono basic acid. It's my type basic acid. That one's not correct. Yeah, this is a mono basic acid. This is the reaction that we need to know to be able to solve this part of the question. Let's move on to the next option. Uh, most of this is just direct theory that you will have to just read up and be familiar with. So, what happens on strong heating of diborane? So B2H6 will become ammonia. So this three times. Boron also from complex, right? really likes them. Actually, one of the highest tendency of complex. Anyway, so this is what it forms. Um, you heat this a lot, it gives you this product, which happens to be a good old inorganic benzene. And that always needs to be well here. Yep. Okay, so this is this is the balanced reaction. And this here is inorganic benzene. This is what the structure looks like. Anyway. Uh, this is the component of the So some instead of carbons you have borons. These are the there you go. Next option. This one's correct, obviously. Next one. Reaction of diborane and methanol. How many moles would I don't say you need to react uh, this completely? Well, the reaction is in front of you. What happened? B2H6 reacts with which is the same as CS. Give it this compound. Now, Balance this. First of all, there are two borons here. I need to put a two. Here. 
months. If I were to get this, I clearly see that I need six months. Six months right here. I have high to right? Six months. H2 balances. So clearly, you need six. Yeah. Uh, the only trick here was to figure out what compound is formed. Since uh, we're on to bonds, this is ester. Uh, this is the. This is not an ester. Toxin. That's all. And this, so the answer here would be six. The question here, or one of the options says that three moles are required, which is incorrect. Six moles are required to be active. So this one's not correct. Look at the last one. You need to have you need to draw the structure of borax. There's no other way, which I've done for you. Uh, count to be OB bonds. That's it. Again, a straightforward thing. So all these options in itself may seem a little intimidating, but if you've gone through the Boron family in detail, you should be able to do this with a little bit of an effort. Okay, so this is what the structure looks like. You know, some of them are hybridization is different from the other, and all of those are a part of the structure. So anyway, we just need to count the BOE bonds, right? So one here, this is two, this is three, this is four, and this is five. Oh yeah, it's five and this one's correct. So there you go. The, those are the correct options on your screen right now. Something, a bit of theory about boron that we just had to push through. No other way out here. Correct options are on the screen. Here's the question that can have more than one correct answer. All of these are uh, statements about protein elements. You need to figure out which ones are incorrect. So let's jump right into it. We'll look at the options, figure out which ones are correct. All right. So first one talks about the hybrid hybridization of boron in borax. You're going to have to draw the structure. That's in front of you right now. Figure out which ones are sp2, which ones are sp3. Now, sp2 would have three bonds. sp3. Bonds. That's an easy way of figuring it out because there are no load pair of electrons here as such. Yeah. There are only three or four bonds on all borons. So this is this is quite easy to figure out. Uh, this one is clearly sp3. This one sp3. Four bonds. Mark them. Just, just to make sure that sp2, three bonds here. sp2, three bonds here. So yeah, sure, this one's alright. But there are two each of uh, sp2 this one seems all right all right answer remember incorrect questions is what incorrect options are the ones we figure out look at the other one the next option that's what e not reduction of plus let's see let's see the next one talks about complex formation by boron these two options i have them both on the same screen because they're kind of small and quick a little bit of electrochem that you have to be familiar with by now yeah if you're doing inorganic chemistry a little bit of thermo, a little bit of electrochem will come into the picture. Okay, so if this value is positive, what does that imply? That implies that this reaction likes to happen. Spontaneity. I say likes, I mean spontaneity. Yes. Thermodynamics. Yes. Which means that, uh, well, TL3 plus is not stable. Not stable. It's not stable. This makes sense. Remember inert pair effect? So, yeah, TL3 plus is not so stable. TL plus on the other hand, sure like speaking up PL3 plus not so much so this is positive uh hence we can figure out whether this is correct or not really not right this is option is correct uh complex formation by boron is that possible is that not possible boron has a really really small cell okay. and this entire group is, is the only one that really likes forming complexes i use the word like very loosely thermodynamic How's that? On many of the points. The point is that the charge to volume ratio is really, really high. It's but like some complexes. This is some theory that you just have to have to. The thelium idea, we could have we could have figured that out by electrochem ideas also. Not something that you absolutely have to mark. If you know the net per effect, you'll be able to figure that out. But this one should. Yeah, there's no way out of Hydrogen atoms in diborin. Six famous question tested a lot on the main as well as the advanced exam. And then the structure, the banana bottom, all of that. So, you know where I'm going with this. They're not the equivalent. Yeah, there's a three center, two electron bond. This is that banana bond. 
green uh, so these are not the same as the ones on the outside yeah this bond is stronger and longer which is kind of counterintuitive tested a lot usually when a bond is kind of longer it has a lower bond order and bond strength also lower not the case in this exception to the rule uh, taught by a lot of teachers time and again sure hydrogen and but not all equal in correct option and also your answer remember we need to figure out the Uh, so yeah, the strategy here was just to look at each and every option and figure it out. Answer this one, which is for more videos and live lectures on the JEE, click on the subscribe button now.